My name is Shaheen Merali, and I want to welcome all of you here today. I'm an artist, curator, and a researcher based in London, UK. At the moment, I'm the visiting professor at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna. I've convened this program entitled Pax Practices, which are three online discussions which are recorded and are also available online. Um, I would like to thank, I would like to start by thanking my colleagues at the university who've been very kind uh, to allow me to do this, uh, especially the Vice Rector, Professor Barbara putz pleko who's been made generous with her time and her department, as well as from her department, Frank Mueller and Peter Putz, who has helped design the, the three wonderful pro pro posters. And I'm with two great technicians, my two of the students here from the Engelwade, Sarah Kentado and Nagul Garashir, who, who, who will be with us throughout the session to make sure that everything goes the way it should go. And um, the Pax Praxis were really set up to allude to act as a counterforce because we're always trying to build um, a frame and a way of framing and conceptualizing, especially deglobalization and decolonization. And our understanding of it, of course, is through multiple locations that we find ourselves, especially in the art field and the education sector. Most artists also still independent to be independent, do work in some form, not only the art field of, of galleries, um, but actually the art field that exists in all formal and informal education sector. But what has happened recently, which is also interesting, is that there's been a, a, a great amount of breakdown, which has provoked a, a kind of comprehensive rereading by artists and scholars to try to enable further discussions of the processes of what has been done to us and how can the undoing and remaking define ourselves from a, from a separation from what we have inherited, both in the art field, but also as artists in our training. The, true, the previous two webinars, which were held on the 30th of March and the 4th of May, are, as I said, available on, the, on, on, the, on YouTube. Um, but it's really, really important now that we come to the third one, which I was really looking forward to, because I'm working with two people who I've known for not very long, but long enough to feel that they have really, really excelled in what they're doing at the moment. And it's for that reason I, I wanted to bring them together on this particular moment. For this session, which is Film as Movement, Practices, Strategies, and Forums. And they've been involved in all of those areas. They've been very strategically important, not only for themselves, but for other artists. Uh, they've been strategic in the way that they created their work, but also how their works are disseminated. So I'd like to just uh, say hello to Vika, who is uh, there with us now. Hello, Vika. And then, of course, there's Michelle. Now, the two panelists were brought together to look at the notion of the, the, the moving lens, or the lens of moving images, let's say, rather than anything else, which still remains elusive for most artists outside of the Western Hemisphere because of the cost, the technical facilities, and the training that it demands. And we have to come to terms with the fact that the involvement by artists with moving images has different factors that supports it and denies being within it. And I think this is something which is important to take on board, that moving images is not something global, yet it has a global history. And we will touch on that, I'm sure, in both of those presentations. Moving images, as such, have a very particular place in a demand for the right of freedom um, and the freedom of opinion, of expression, partly due, due to the fact that moving images can be disseminated widely and they capture a creative moment, including actual acts or records of speaking, speech, um, and, and more recently, providing both direct and a broad approach to um, seeking freedom uh, and working towards the unfreedoms or coming out of unfreedom. 
Film is also been used as a vehicle for explanation for many people. Um, it provides, provides and it makes an account for conceptual processes. And it goes beyond the notion of pure display. And pure display has been really used for traditional art skills such as painting and sculpture. Film makes complex connections for a wider public arena. And of course, it increasingly um, and consistently provides actual accounts, which have remained outside of normative framing of accounts. So as I said, the right to freedom to hold opinion without interference and to seek and receive and impart information has become more and more part of both factual and fictional accounts. So film, as any media, any technology, has its own fluidity. And regardless of frontiers, this ultimately has been recognized through artist practice and through their constant attention to the media to uncover a vast pool of knowledge that has entered the art field and influenced it greatly. And this is what I'm really interested in tonight with, with these two interesting, very beautiful people. So Vika and Michelle are fascinating. They're, for me, attractive people in the sense that They've assisted in, in the interpretation of our world by making the unknown known. And this is, this is not an easy task. This is an important consideration. It brings a kind of source of great joy to discover it as an artist or another artist or as a curator of an artist. But they have not only been working within the art field, they've also been working with other circuits or programs with other forms of distributions, through festivals, through competitions, through installations, and possibly, I'm not sure, but also amongst private and public screenings. So this film has a, a, a different array of distribution, but also display. Um, and the role of film archives more and more has become important for both of those artists because it provides material in different languages at different times. It frames geopolitical as well as formal and theoretical questions. So just as a sort of departure from our two speaker, our speakers, I also want to just throw out something here that film has an international realm, which we need to consider. Uh, for instance, the, 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 the transmedia media, Arts and Cultures um, Chair at Concordia University, uh, Masha Salakina, sorry, I haven't pronounced that very well, um, has suggested that cinemas of Asia, Africa, and Latin America have been around since the 1960s and 1970s. And they provide a profound, groundbreaking new framework of understanding cinematic cultures of the 20th century. And we have to remember that through the networks of distribution festivals and informal channels, we have a great history that exists in the world, which is unfortunately not part of the Western hemisphere still. Um, so what is I think important is to talk about that place of international intellectual exchange that coexists at the same time as the films which are now coming through in the sectors which, which we, could, we could say are the new film histories and cultures um, in the West. Now, what I mean by that is that I feel to a large extent through my research that it's very difficult to change perceptions and the public community remains grateful for any new knowledge which is brought on to bear. What I hope is going to happen today is that we have an understanding our artists are trying to contribute and the two presentations propose responses to contextual histories, which have been, in a sense, separated by imperial histories to a certain extent. Both, both presentations are centered on our relationship to the body and to technologies of empowerment, as well as memory and the writing of scripts as rhetorical devices, especially in what Vika's monograph suggested, to eloquently unfold inherent relationships or relations of oppression and, em and emancipation. 